Let's check in right now with their GM, Jarmo Kekalainen. Thanks for taking the time for us here on our coverage of the NHL draft. And uh, let's just start with Max Domi because you traded for him, so obviously you liked his game. But then you went even further and signed him to an extension. What went into that decision? Well, obviously very happy to now have him under a contract and, and uh, you know, makes sense for both sides. Uh, gives us a cost certainty, gives us two years of time to get to know each other. And uh, he's 25 years old now, so by the time we get to the end of the contract, he'll be 27. And, and then we can uh, negotiate a long-term deal or we can get to the table as early as next summer. So I think it's a, it's a perfect length for us. And in, in this flat cap world and a little bit of uncertainty in front of us, uh, I think it makes perfect sense. You know, you mentioned that, the flat cap world and all the uncertainty that's in the world period right now. How much of that is going to impact, you think, player movement over the next several days, Jarmo? Because it, it does look like it's going to be a significant impact. Well, I think so, yeah. And you see a lot of guys not getting uh, qualified, the guys that played in the NHL, and and there's been some buyouts and and and, and things like that. So I think everybody's uh, going with their plan to uh, to make sure that they fit underneath the cap. And obviously, our move here was uh, also determined by the uh, the process that we have to go through in the NHL, which is the uh, arbitration process that kind of gives us the guidelines for where the contract's going to end up and. And the number that we ended up with Max Domi was right, right around those numbers that we f felt that was going to be uh, the ARP number for him uh, if, if we had chosen that route this year. So, uh, again, yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a, a challenge for most of the teams in the league, but uh, nothing that we can't overcome. Yeah, lots of challenges that we're all trying to overcome here in 2020, and especially when it comes to this year's draft. This is not anything like any draft you've been a part of throughout your career. So how would you describe it in terms of any certain challenges that you've had to deal with or, or maybe even positives of having a virtual draft? Yeah, it's, it's been certainly different. Uh, but it started in the springtime when we had our virtual, our first ever virtual scouting meeting. So we've continued from that and watched a lot of tape, done a lot of background work on players. We didn't uh, get into live viewings after March, um, except into this year, which was which is another uh, advantage, I guess, that you could uh, count on this year. Uh, we could watch games all the way up to the uh, the draft, live in Europe in particular, and and some even in North America. So it's been different, but it's been great. And, uh, you know, there's there's still a uh, little work to do before we get the draft done, and then we'll uh, move on and uh, have our sights into the next season. You certainly had all of us who cover the draft uh, scrambling last night for through our notebooks for uh, your first round pick, uh, Chinnikov. What's the what was the rub there? What did you like about him? I like it when guys go up and teams go up and really have faith in their list and make a selection that you know other people may not be aware of. What was the factor for you there with that young man? Well, I, we go always based on what our scouts think, how their reports are, how their lists are. We don't really care about the, uh, um, you know, what the uh, outside noise is. We respect everybody's opinion and, and the, uh, the lists that the people that watch hockey and get, uh, collect their information on. But that's why we have a scouting staff. And uh, we watched this guy all year long last year and into this year. And he's, he's up to a tremendous start in the uh, KHL. He's got five goals. In the first 12 games, he's playing on the first line with a good team in avant-garde Omsk. He's playing for an NHL coach who played him 22 and a half minutes last game against the uh, last year's champion, Chase Ka. So we, we feel we got a really good player. And, and uh, you know, I had a lot of opportunities to move down and, and uh, you know, maybe grab a couple extra picks and then sweat it out and see if we can get it. Later in the first round, we didn't want to take that chance. And I, I've gathered some information that I think it was a good decision to, because there were other teams that would have taken him in that range, too. All right, Yarmo, before we let you go, i got to find out, you know, the draft is important, but how's your tennis game? <laughs> uh, it's not very good. I've, I've, I've had some, <laughs> some back, back, back problems and, oh, boy. And, and so forth. So my, my tennis game is struggling, but, uh, you know. That Scotty Hartnell maybe, might maybe beat you. Maybe I'll, I'll get some more practice after this. That Scotty Hartnell might beat you now. I'm worried about you. <laughs> Uh, no, no, Scotty. <laughs> well, really quick, I did have one follow-up because, you know, we've got some time. This has yeah. been a marathon yes, day, too, of the NHL draft. So before we yeah. let you go. Just, just for your information, Scotty Hartnell has never beaten me. Ah. Oh, 
Oh, there we like go. That. There you go. He's going to be calling us here in a second. Say, I'd like to join the show. Oh, as sure. No, uh, I do want to ask you really quickly before we let you go, just about this whole playoff experience from your perspective. It's been a little bit now that you've had time to reflect on everything, bubble life, and what you saw from your team. How would you describe that whole experience? Well, I think the NHL did, did a tremendous job in, in, in securing everybody's safety, health, and, and all that stuff. It couldn't have been any better. There was zero positive cases. Obviously, that was the most important thing. You know, you're never going to have a perfect life in the bubble when you're when you're living in the bubble. Nobody wants to live in the bubble, but uh, NHL did the best they could in a in a very challenging situation, and, and we got uh, ourselves a Stanley Cup champion in Tampa Bay Lightning, and I congratulate them and. And Julian Brisebois and his staff, and we had some good pickleball games in the bubble. So that was a little <laughs> bit of entertainment and, and exercise for us in Toronto. But uh, our bubble life was a little bit too short, and, and we're going to try to extend that in normal circumstances in the next playoffs. That's fantastic. I don't think anyone out there watching would have guessed that the GMs of the Lightning and the Blue Jackets would play pickleball. These two teams have a great history these Why past not? couple of years, including a five overtime game that we'll always remember. So thanks so much for the time and the conversation and good luck going forward.